And good evening, everyone. Good to be here with you this evening. It's certainly good to have uh, each and every one of you with us uh, tonight, uh, here on Wednesday night, July the 1st. We've officially made it through half of 2020, and I certainly hope the back half is better than the first half. Uh, I'm sure you agree with me on that. Uh, we'll do like we have done in the past. We'll have, uh, have some prayer requests. Uh, well, I won't read any prayer requests, but we'll have prayer, uh, and uh, we'll go over uh, a list of those that we uh, want to keep in prayer and all the time. And then uh, after that, we'll be studying in Matthew chapter 5, probably be finishing tonight uh, as we're starting in verse 38. Uh, and we will uh, study that section. And, and I'm not so sure that uh, the timing on this for us, uh, it, it's nothing on my part, and it's certainly a God thing. But I think once you see, when we get into it, you'll see that it's perfectly timed for what we're going through right now. But uh, certainly let's keep our nation uh, in our prayers as we continue to go through not only this pandemic, but also the, uh, the rioting, though I am pleased to, to hear that uh, uh, this is being slowed down uh, much less than it was prior to. They're beginning to uh, take back over these downtowns and these large cities where this has been going on. But that's not to say that they're still not uh, rioting going on and looting. Uh, I'm not condemning protesting. Uh, it's our right as an American to protest peacefully, uh, but when you get into the rioting, destruction of property, and in some cases murder, uh, then that's criminal activity, and uh, we certainly don't condone that, and that's what we need to be in prayer for as well. Uh, also, our president, uh, continue to keep him in your prayers as uh, we move forward, especially as we're getting ready to celebrate the nation's 244th uh, birthday on Saturday with uh, July the 4th. And I hope that you and your families uh, are able to enjoy that. Uh, go watch fireworks, uh, those that are available around about, and uh, certainly enjoy that. But always remember and celebrate our freedom. It was very hard fought for, and as we can see now, uh, it is worth fighting for and it may, uh, we may have to fight for it again. And so certainly uh, we need to be thankful that we're able to, uh, to live in this country that we do and the blessings that we have because of that. Uh, let's also continue to keep all of our elected officials uh, in our prayers. We know this is an election season. Uh, been odd at the beginning uh, for the election season with a lot of mail-in ballots, but with that it was even uh, some good news that there was 27% voter turnout, which is the highest uh, for the uh, primary. So there's good news there, but uh, I'm hoping that they'll have it fixed so that we can all go vote in person uh, in November. Uh, be in prayer for that. Uh, and all of this surrounds, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'd like to especially call for not just a day of prayer for all of us, uh, and share this with your friends on Facebook and and uh, not that we haven't been and you don't but I, I would like to see each of us uh, take just five minutes each and every day and specifically pray uh, for uh, God to remove this COVID-19 virus and pandemic from not just the United States but across the globe and uh, I believe that uh, when we pray together for a common uh, request uh, and God sees our sincerity and our heart for that, he will heal here. And that's what the uh, scriptures tells us when, when my people who are called by my name uh, pray. Uh, I will hear their voice and uh, heal their land. Of course, that's me paraphrasing that scripture, but I have great confidence in that. So I'd like for all of us to pray uh, for the COVID-19 virus and this pandemic to uh, be removed from us as well. Uh, let's not forget uh, the folks that's lost loved ones. Uh, we had someone here in the uh, church family that lost a, a grandfather today and certainly pray that you be uh, in prayer for that family as well as the other ones that has lost loved ones in the community and uh, just keep you, those families for comfort uh, in your prayers. Also and not forgetting uh, brave men and women who serve this nation in law enforcement, uh, the police, uh, 
uh, any type of law enforcement role, uh, let's be in prayer for them. Let's pray for their safety and the safety of their families and all of those that support them as well. And let's not forget our health care workers. Many of these states are seeing great numbers of uh, increases in the cases of this COVID-19 and the uh, the fears that we were experiencing back in March and April about overwhelming the medical system uh, is a reality in some of uh, these larger cities and these states that's seen these increases. So let's be in prayer for not only the folks in our area, the medical staff here, but all the healthcare workers that are still dealing with this. Though we've, we're kind of getting a little relief, uh, there are many people are seeing uh, a great burden put on them. Uh, let's also remember the other first responders uh, that uh, take care of us in times of need, our fire and rescue, uh, the EMS. Uh, let's keep those folks in our prayers and their families as well, that they're able to go about their duties safely and everything they do would be to the benefit of each person that they serve in that respect also. So be in prayer for our state and county leaders as we continue to move forward. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this out too. Let's be in prayer for our local school board and our superintendent. They are uh, they're making decisions, gathering information as we speak. Uh, this week we've been busy doing that, gathering data, uh, guidance from the uh, Kentucky Department of Education so that we, he can make a, uh, a good decision about the reopening of school. And let's be in prayer that that is successful and that we're able to do things that will keep uh, uh, this from spreading and maybe have to shut things back down as far as school goes because we know that what a, a difficult time working families have uh, if their children are not at school. So uh, be in prayer for those things. A lot of things uh, going on that affect us locally, whether you have school children uh, in your homes, you certainly know someone that does in your family or friend or neighbor. And uh, certainly we need to be in prayer for the safety of all the school employees. And then of course, the safety of the children uh, as they come back uh, to school as well. And it will be here before we know it. Uh, starting July 1st, August will roll around and, and whatever date they pick, if it's August or September, we don't know that yet, but whatever date uh, they pick, it's gonna be here quickly. So we we'll certainly ask that you be in prayer uh, for those folks as well. And then of course, those that are on our uh, shut-in list on your bulletin. Uh, they have gotten, uh, we know uh, the restrictions has been lifted from visitation into nursing homes, but as we know, uh, a local nursing home has several uh, cases in the 40s uh, on the cases for uh, uh, residents, and I think there are seven or eight staff that has that, so uh, just because they're able to open back up doesn't necessarily mean that it might be a, a good idea to start allowing visitors. So let's be in prayer for that as well, because certainly know it devastates nursing homes. Uh, let's also be in prayer for the men and women in our military, uh, uh, the, for their safety and their family's safety as well, and, and God's blessings upon them, again, especially as we celebrate our nation's freedom. And uh, those men and women that serve in our nation's military uh, are on the front line each and every day. Uh, standing guard to protect those freedoms and the American people as well. And then certainly we should never forget the men and women that are on the front line uh, delivering the gospel of Jesus Christ, our missionaries, uh, folks uh, all over the world trying to, to be Jesus to someone in the midst of a pandemic. And uh, we know that Jesus set a wonderful example about going to the sick or having the sick brought to him. And, and in that, these folks are, are uh, mirroring that same kind of love and compassion. So let's be in prayer for those folks as well. And then also I ask that you be in prayer for our board here at church as we consider uh, the data that we're taking in about our local cases. And, and I hope to, the weather looks good for Sunday to have drive-in service. And uh, we kind of talked about parking a little different so more people would be able to view forward. So we're, uh, you, when you drive up Sunday, uh, you may be asked to park a little differently than you have. So just be patient with us as we go through that. And then Lord willing, and uh, things don't jump up dramatically, then we'll start back next Wednesday night with in-person services again here. And then uh, Sunday the 12th, uh, let's, uh, we'll be in prayer that uh, 
be able to resume our regular church services. So a lot of stuff to pray for. Uh, so you got a lot of things uh, to do that. And having said that, prayer requests, uh, be sure to send those to me. You can either do that by email. Uh, the email address is on the back of the bulletin. My cell phone number is on the back of the bulletin. You can text that to me. You can call me. Or you can call the church phone number and leave it on the answering machine, and I'll retrieve that as well. So I want to encourage you to, to get those prayer requests in. And uh, certainly as we get any kind of updates on any of the folks on our list or the arrangements for the family uh, that we talked about earlier today, uh, we'll pass those along as well in a one call. So uh, a lot of stuff to be in prayer for at this time. So uh, if you would, we'll go into a, a time of prayer, and I ask that you bow with me as we pray. Almighty God and our most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for this beautiful day you've blessed us with, and yet another opportunity we have to uh, come and offer our worship up to you. And Lord, we find ourselves uh, separated today, not able to join together as a body, uh, physically, but uh, we are joined together in spirit, Lord, and, and we lift our hands to you in praise and worship for the great goodness, and love, and blessings, and grace that you pour out on us. Father, we've mentioned many different needs uh, here this evening uh, from our president and, and uh, elected officials in Washington as they make decisions moving forward together in this nation to, to uh, bring uh, peace and civility back to this nation and, and I pray Father uh, that uh, the right steps are taken uh, so that uh, people know and understand the picture that's being painted is not a, a fair representation of the vast majority of the citizens of this great country and I pray Father especially as Christians uh, that we're able to convey that that uh, we know that you are no respecter of persons and uh, we have no room for that in our lives either father because jesus died for all and we are supposed to love all as we have been called and i pray father that you would bless uh, especially our, our state and local leaders as uh, they continue to make decisions and and try to uh, to go about business in a manner that would uh, prevent us from having to be shut back down again Lord we know that's that's not good for anybody and we pray that uh, you bless them and, and bless all of their efforts so that uh, this uh, might be successful uh, especially father for those that uh, tonight for those that have lost loved ones and we pray your blessings of comfort upon them and father just now as I have asked and called on everyone uh, in the next few days and ahead to specifically take a few minutes and, and offer a prayer uh, to rid us of this COVID-19, this virus, Lord. We know that uh, you know everything about it. Uh, we know, Father, that uh, with just a word, it would disappear from this planet. And Father, that's what we're asking. We're asking because we know that it can be accomplished uh, from you. And I pray, Father, uh, not just for myself, but on behalf of each and every person, uh, that is affected by this around our great uh, globe, this earth you've created, that you remove this uh, virus from us. Uh, we have no trace of it again, and I pray you uh, would do that, and the folks that are currently suffering from the illness caused by this, uh, that they would uh, have that removed from their bodies. And Father, we know that it is in your power, and we just pray and petition you that it would be your will. I pray, Father, that uh, you bless the men and women in our military, as we, uh, especially as we begin to celebrate uh, 244 years as being a nation here. And we, we know, Father, that this nation began and was blessed by you. And, and we pray, Father, that uh, we might again, as a nation, turn our eyes to you and our desire to you. And I pray your blessings upon this country and all the folks that's in it. I pray, Father, that you would be with each uh, military member and their families and keep them safe. Also, Lord, we lift up the uh, men and women in our law enforcement. Uh, we pray, Father, that there would be no more hostilities toward them. We know that they have a dangerous job. We know, Father, that they put their lives on the line uh, each day that they leave for work. And I pray your blessings of safety on each and every one of them, that they're able to return home at the end of their shift safe to their families. Pray also, Lord, for the health care workers that are working uh, to uh, help all the sick 
sick people, not just those affected by COVID-19, but those that have all the other diseases that we that we go through uh, uh, at this time with the cancers and and uh, heart failure and heart disease and, and just uh, breathing problems aside from the viruses and just pray your blessings upon them. Men and women that serve in our first responder areas, Lord. Uh, EMS and uh, EMTs, the rescue squad, the fire departments. Uh, we pray, Father, your safety and blessings upon them. Lord, we have many other needs, uh, but certainly not forgetting the needs of the mis those working in the mission field, serving you. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless their efforts and that people would learn and know about Jesus Christ because of their efforts. And pray that you would keep them and their families safe as well. Watch over, Lord, those that are in the nursing homes or shut in in their home and keep them safe this evening. We pray also, Father, uh, that you would guide and direct us in everything that we do, especially as we go through this lesson tonight and, and how it speaks to us as Christians in the midst of what we're going through as a nation. And I pray, Father, that we can take this wisdom from Jesus' words uh, as he spoke on the Sermon on the Mount and apply it to our lives and that people would, in fact, be able to give you glory because of our actions. And I pray, Father, if we fail you in any way that you would forgive us and we ask your leading, guidance, and direction in all things. It's in Christ's precious and holy name that I pray. And amen. All right. Well, as I said, uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 5. So if you're there, you need to get over to verse 38 is where we will be studying from tonight. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. And you might also want to turn over and mark, if you've got a little piece of paper or something, uh, Luke chapter 6. Uh, verse 27 through 36 is the parallel account of what we'll be reading and we'll look back and forth at, at both of these because uh, though they're uh, describing the same event Luke uses a little different wording than Matthew does and it adds a little more meaning both ways so uh, certainly encourage you to do that so Luke 6 and Matthew chapter 5 and I'll pick up and read starting at verse 38 and over to the end of the chapter verse 48 and uh, we'll go through these, and, and uh, with any luck at all, we'll finish that up. And then next Wednesday, we'll be able to pick up and start in chapter 6. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, I think you'll agree there's a lot of points there that that point directly to what we see in many things going on today. Uh, and it's, uh, I mentioned this Sunday, there's a great deal of differences in the freedoms that we have as Americans versus the obligations that we have as Christians. And this separate, this is an excellent example of that separation. An excellent example <laughs> of the difference in the that Christ makes in the life of the believer versus the freedoms and civil rights that you have as an American. And as we study this, we're going to look and compare uh, 
how we react maybe as a citizen versus how we would react as a Christian. And Jesus begins to say here in verse 38, you have heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. Most of us have probably quoted that before, uh, have heard it quoted anyway. And, and that's simply talking about uh, revenge, equal revenge for equal crime, basically. Uh, if an eye was, was cost, then it cost that person an eye, tooth a tooth. And we get that concept. But Jesus goes on and reminds us in verse 39 and says this, But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now that's a little more difficult for us to swallow, isn't it? Nobody wants to uh, get their uh, face slapped by someone and do nothing in their own defense. You want to slap them back at least. But that's the opposite of what Jesus is saying. He said, don't resist the evil. If someone smites you or slaps you or hits you uh, on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And he goes on, and this is not just talking about physical uh, harm. He goes on. And if any man will sue thee at law and take away thy coat, give to him thy cloak also. So he's calling for us as Christians to go the extra measure, to go the extra step that most people would not naturally take. Naturally, if someone comes up and slaps you, you either want to slap them back or defend yourself in some way. And Jesus is saying, go that extra step. Turn the other cheek to that person. Someone sues you, takes away uh, possession of yours in a court of law. Give them more than what was judged against you. That's really foreign to us, isn't it? To think about giving someone extra and I'll just use money for an example. Uh, let's say you had a, a judgment against you for $5,000. Uh, Jesus is saying, give him six. Why would we do that? Why, why would we give more than we had judged? Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him too. Someone wants you to help. Help me out for about an hour. Help him out for a couple of hours. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. These are some, some things that go against our grain. We have to consciously think about doing the things that Christ is saying here. Because it's not natural for us to do those things. It's not natural to give more than is expected to give more even if we're being treated poorly, uh, to give more if we're in the wrong, because generally that's the case, like the lawsuit. If you lose a judgment in court, generally speaking, you have been in the wrong. So we're being attacked. Jesus says, turn the other cheek. You're in the wrong and the judgment is against you. Give them more than they asked for. Someone asked you to go a mile with them, go two. Someone asked that you give them something or borrow from them. Don't turn away from them. Give. And then look at what Jesus says in verse 43. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Now that we all can do, right? I mean, we've probably heard that or seen that on Facebook 500 times in the past uh, few weeks with all of the turmoil going on. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. But unfortunately, what we see here. It's the second part, very prevalent. It's what we see on the news, and I believe they do that just to keep us stirred up and worried, to make us think that things are worse off. And hate thine enemy. Well, who's thine enemy? Well, I can tell you who the enemy is. It's the devil. That's our enemy. That's the enemy of all people. It's the enemy especially of Christians. But Jesus is quoting here out of the Old Testament. Leviticus, if you want to look that up, chapter 19. He's saying, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But he changes that all around. He says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. 
Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Wow, that's difficult for us to do, isn't it? Oh, that's just as foreign as those other things that I've talked about, that Jesus has talked about, and I'm just quoting. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? But we're called to be a peculiar people. We're called to be changed when we accept Christ and we put on that new man. When we put on Christ, the, when you're baptized, when you bury the old, raise the new creation in Christ. And this is a description of that new creation. That new creation can love their enemy. That new creation can bless them that curses them. That new creation can be good to those that hate you. And you can pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That's the change that Christ makes in us. And that's what he's telling us here on the Sermon on the Mount. And he affirms that in verse 45. Look with me here. He says, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. All of that that he's just talked about, 38 through 44. He's telling us to do these things that we may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Now we, we can certainly recognize that, can't we? There's not a one of us that hasn't said, well, look at how they live their life and they have such blessings. Look at all the possessions they have. Uh, look at the home, the car, the job, the, uh, all of the things. On the external is what we're judging now. Remember, we're judging on the external. But if they have no relationship with God through Jesus Christ, do they really have anything of value? Oh, they may have material goods. But we know that those are only good while we are here. And the time that we are here is very, very small compared to eternity. So listen to what Jesus is saying again. For ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. I wouldn't trade all of the, the possessions that the richest man on the earth or in the state of Kentucky or even Laurel County has uh, for what I have minus a relationship with Jesus. I'm satisfied with what I have. The most valuable thing I have is my relationship with God. The most valuable thing in that is my Savior, Jesus Christ. And when I have that, when we look at our value, the things that we have, based on God's blessings, when we judge our success by how well we imitate Christ, then these things can begin to come easier. I'm not going to say they're ever going to be easy for us to do because we're human. But then it gets easier. And Jesus goes on in 46 and says this, For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? It's easy to treat people that treat you well. It's easy to treat them well, isn't it? It's easy to say hello to a brother or sister uh, in Christ that you know out Make a point to run up to them uh, while you're at the store or out somewhere in public and speak to them. But it's much more different to see someone maybe in need and speak to that person with the same kind of enthusiasm than someone you know. And that's what Jesus is saying. The publicans, and we know how he feels about the publicans, okay? We know he really gets after them about the hypocrisy that they have. He's saying that's what they do. And you think you're doing a good thing? You're doing nothing more than those that I'm really dissatisfied with are doing. And then look at verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, that's not saying that Jesus is calling for us to be sinless, because that's not possible. We believers sin, 
Uh, we sin every day. But what he's talking about there is the perfect love of God toward other people. And when we look at the other verses from 38 to 47, we see that's exactly what he's talking about. It's having that perfect love of other people, perfect love for people that uh, you consider an enemy or maybe considers you an enemy. Uh, perfect love for those that curse you, perfect love for those that hate you, and you're able to pray for them which use you despitefully uh, or persecute you. And we think about Jesus, the example that he set there for him. He loved his enemies. He was able to bless them that cursed him. He did good to those that hated him. And he prayed for those which despitefully used him and persecuted him. And that's what he's calling for us to do, is to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect with that love. Now, I told you I want to look at Luke. And let's I'll read through that. Uh, 27 through 36. Luke chapter 6, 27 through 36. And you'll see how this is the same, same account, just a little different wording. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take away thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend hoping nothing again. And your reward shall be great and you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. So the same account, but Luke adds a couple of things in there. And the one that I wanted us to look at specifically here is verse 31. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. The golden rule is what that basically is. And that's how we should lead our lives, not only as Christians, but as Americans. We should do to every man or woman or child, we should do unto them as we would want done unto us or our wives or our children. And if this nation will just take heed these 10 verses in either gospel and take them to heart. What a wonderful place this would be. What a change we would see in our country. Now, how is it that those folks or folks like them can see these 10 verses? Each and every one of you and myself living out what Jesus is teaching us to live out. Having perfect love, like he said in Matthew's account, the perfect love that God has. And he uses the word merciful here being merciful to others, forgiving, having compassion. Not just extending that love, compassion, and mercy to those that we know, those that treat us well, and those that uh, we get along well with or share our kind of faith. But he's calling for us to have those kind of actions for each and every person that we meet. And that's what we need as a country. We need to have the same kind of love for whoever we come to, whoever we encounter, as we would for our own families. Now, remember, we studied in Matthew in verse 43, hate thine enemy. Remember, we have an enemy. Peace has an enemy. Love has an enemy. And he's been around for a long time. He tempted Jesus in the wilderness. That's our enemy. And in the same way that he tempted and, and tried to trip, trip up Christ 
while he was in the wilderness. He does that to us each and every day. And the hate and the anger that we see in, in the, some of these rioters, some of these uh, cities, that's the same kind of hate and evil that our enemy wants to keep stirred up in us, in us as individuals, in us as families, in us as communities, in a nation, and really in, in the whole as a world. As long as we can stay stirred up fighting one another, there can never be this kind of brotherly love that Christ is calling for us to have. As long as we feel like we're being cheated of something, as long as we feel like something's being withheld from me because of uh, a certain criteria, then we can keep having hate stirred up in our hearts. And we can spread that hate to people that I can convince uh, are in the same condition that I am. But the simple fact is, in the eyes of God, we are all sinners. The scriptures tells us that we all for, fall short of, the, of the, the glory of God. And Jesus also says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man cometh to the Father except through me. And that's, when we have that kind of love that Christ is talking about here, when we have the realization that I'm no different than anyone else except that Jesus' blood covered me, and yes, I may be wronged, Society may say that I should take some kind of revenge, but Christ tells me to have mercy because who is, who is most uh, allowed or has most justification to take revenge other than God on us? And especially given the price that was paid so that we might have salvation. Do unto men as you would have them to do unto you. Love your enemies. Be perfect. Be merciful as your Father in heaven. That's what Jesus is telling us. And that's a great section in this uh, Sermon on the Mount. We'll continue next week, uh, chapter 6. Jesus continues right on teaching. And, and it's, it's really just teaching us. And, and those that heard him speak this sermon it's teaching us how to live as Jesus lived so that we can be pleasing servants in the sight of God and so that we can have the effect on people uh, that these actions would be understood. Something is different about that person because when I slapped them, they turned their other cheek for me to slap it. Something's different about that person because, you know, I sued that guy and won a judgment against him and, and the judge... Uh, ordered that he pay me $500 and the guy gave me $750 and said I'm sorry that I was in the wrong there's a difference in people that are able to uh, say uh, I'll help you however long it takes I'll do whatever you need me to do people recognize that difference and people once they recognize that difference it may raise a curiosity to say what is it how is it that they're able to do that and we know that it's because of Jesus Christ. And certainly I hope you've enjoyed tonight's study. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Uh, we're going to wind down here now for just a few minutes uh, over what would normally go at 7.30, but that's okay. Uh, I think we had a good time with that. Uh, prayer requests, let me encourage you again uh, to get those in to me. Uh, cell phone, church email, uh, you can do that uh, uh, church telephone on the answering machine or you can send me a, uh, a text uh, either any of those will work fine I'll get that to you uh, don't forget we will be having drive-in services on Sunday at 11 parking's going to look a little different so be patient with us as we try to get this lined out where more people uh, have a view of, of the front of the church uh, instead of the back of your vehicle so uh, especially if some of you don't wash your car uh, that might not be a pleasant view for someone. So we're going to try to you can see, everyone can see uh, as much as possible. And then also, remember those points of prayer that I encouraged you to. Number one, be in prayer that uh, things settle down to where we can begin having church service again a week from tonight. Uh, 
be in prayer that God removes this COVID-19 virus. He has the power. Let's just pray for his will to do that. Be in prayer for our leadership, all of the folks that's out there serving us in the healthcare field, men and women in the military, law enforcement, first responders, and keep those folks in your prayers each and every day. Don't forget to pray comfort for those that's lost loved ones. And for those that are shut in, let me encourage you. If you know someone that's shut in and doesn't get out, are not able to get out, doesn't have many visitors, if you know someone's in a nursing home, give them a call. Give them a call, if it, even just for five minutes to call. Say, hello, I was thinking about you. Just want to let you know that I love you. Uh, it'll help their day go by a little bit better. I hope you all have a great week. Uh, after we close with prayer, I'm going to play a couple of songs. So those of you that want to stay signed on and listen to the music, I'll play two songs through for you uh, for that. Otherwise, hope you have a great week. Uh, hope the Lord blesses you and keeps you safe and in his care. And I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for drive-up services. Let's pray. Almighty God and our most gracious and heavenly Father, truly, Lord, we're thankful for the study we were able to have tonight. This great lesson that Jesus taught us, the lesson that teaches us 180 degrees difference of the natural man versus the man that is changed by Christ. And I pray, Heavenly Father, your blessings upon each and every person that studied with us tonight and or may, may watch this later on in the week. And I pray, Father, your blessings upon them and their families. I pray, Father, that we're able to go through the remainder part of this week and be a good example of Christ, uh, an example of, of these scenarios that Jesus taught us about, that we in some ways go through each and every day, that we would re react in a peculiar way something different, something that may make someone take note and want to find out what it is inside of us that can uh, cause a person to react opposite of what society, what the world would act. And I pray, Father, that when we have that opportunity, we would be able to share Jesus with them. I pray, Father, your safety and blessings upon each and every family represented uh, on this today and that we'll watch this later on and in our church family I pray your blessings upon them and safety and I pray Father your guidance for all of us that we would be found pleasing servants in your sight and especially Lord if we fail you I ask your forgiveness and pray your guidance uh, for repentance in that area thank you Lord for Jesus thank you for the salvation that he purchased through his sacrifice and I pray Father thank you also for the example that he left for us to follow I pray now that you go with us through the rest of this evening and the rest of this week. It's in Christ's precious and holy name that I pray, and amen.